Thanks very much, everybody. Um, hello, welcome. Good to be here. Um, this is the post-lunch shift, so we'll try and keep this engaging and um, as exciting as possible within reason of the topic that we're talking about. Um, so I'm uh, at Gallagher. I work within the employee benefits team at Gallagher Benefit Solutions and Services at Gallagher. And, um, you know, this whole topic of employee experience is, is really on our radar at the moment and I'm sure is on yours as well. I'm also director trustee of Engage for Success. Engage for Success was launched by the previous, previous government, um, really focused on raising the profile of employee engagement in the UK and shining a light on best practice. I'm also on the pension dashboard steering uh, group, which is great and pleased to say um, that Dashboard has cross-party support, so regardless of the outcome in actually two weeks today, believe it or not, but regardless of the outcome of that, we're confident that Dashboards will happen uh, no matter who is in at number 10. Um, so in the next, about, I think, about 17 minutes, I just really want to talk more about uh, this topic of employee experience and, importantly, the role that technology has to play. There's some really in interesting insights this morning um, on technology in the, the two sessions that we had as keynotes. But um, I just want to unpack that a bit more in terms of the role that we think technology has to play in the employee experience. I want to share also an example, an award-winning example of um, employee experience delivery across multi-channel and multi-device um, that delivered a real seamless ex employee experience. Um, and, you know, we just uh, hopefully have time at the end for a couple of questions as well. I'm under strict instructions that I have 17 minutes, and I believe the trap door will open at the end of that. So that's no problem. Let's start with, um, let's start with Fraser's journey. Um, so, so Fraser, he applied for a role as digital project manager at the organisation. It was a very tough selection process. He uh, finally got awarded the job. He was absolutely uh, delighted. On day one, he arrives at the office um, he walks to reception, his pass is waiting for him, um, his pass works when he holds it up, and the gate opens and there is Jane, his manager, waiting for him, beaming face, welcome to the organisation, Fraser, congratulations, it's your first day. Fraser's chuffed, uh, Jane takes Fraser upstairs, introduces him to his new team, and all is going so well. And then Jane ushers Fraser to his desk, and it is like Christmas has come early. On his desk is his MacBook. Air, he's got his iPad there, he's got his phone, um, got a, a, a notepad, a, a water bottle, even a signed welcome note from all of his team. And he is feeling so chuffed. I'm so glad that he made the decision to join the organisation. Jane says, let's go down for lunch at lunchtime. Um, we're not going to take the stairs because that's boring. Let's take the slide. <laughs> uh, let's go down for lunch. Um, let's, in fact, let's have a little play in the ball pit before lunch. Uh, and you could also have a game of table tennis with Josh, your new friend of marketing. And uh, Fraser is just blown away. This place is so cool. Um, he's unpacked his iPad, goes back for the afternoon, does a bit of uh, uh, training, a bit of, uh, you know, just learning a bit about the organisation, logs into the LMS. It's all set up. His login all works, of course. He just logs seamlessly in to LMS, does a bit of induction training. And on the way home... Um, oh, nearly, nearly had a spillage in the village there. Um, on, on, on the way home, of course, he goes straight onto LinkedIn. He posts that photograph um, and, and says, what an amazing first day today. Um, he goes onto Glassdoor. He gives um, the organisation a five-star rating and 100% recommend. Would I recommend? Absolutely. Um, and this is a win-win. It's a win for Fraser. He's absolutely delighted. He's an advocate now already of the organisation. What an um, amazing first day he's had, what an incredible employee experience he's been on the receiving end of. And of course it's also a win for the organisation. Yet another five star rating on Glassdoor and 100% recommend. Now of course we can laugh about that kind of idyllic experience and I'm sure we've all seen those kind of posts on LinkedIn and you just think, wow, you know, I'd love to work for that organisation. Of course, wouldn't think that, but you know, that's the kind of that's what um, you know the organisations are looking to deliver—a brilliant onboarding experience. And actually, talent attraction and retention um, it is key. I would say that employee experience is the new battleground for talent in the UK and indeed globally. Um, research conducted by WorldCom amongst 540 CEOs around the world found that the ability to attract talent and the quality of the employer brand was the biggest driver for success. 34% uh, of leaders stated that the lack of available talent posed the biggest threat to their plans. So employee experience is really important. And of course, we know with increased transparency, and we've heard 
a lot about transparency already today, but you know, we just go on and find out what that organization is as if there really were a Glassdoor, a greenhouse into the organization, and you get very candid reviews. It's not just Glassdoor, it's Vault, it's Career Bliss, of course, best companies, great places to work is uh, always a good thing to have in terms of employee brand. So we know that this matters and we know that it's critical, but it's not just about that first day experience. The whole employee journey is critical. And throughout the employee journey that any individual will have, and this isn't, I mean, this is just a, a, a snapshot of what the journey could be. It's not every single aspect of that journey, I realise that. But if you look throughout that from job research to pre-joining communications, uh, the welcome on day one, the induction, familiarisation, then log into the benefits portal and select benefits, uh, setting objectives, training and development, first performance review, uh, career progression, pay reviews, uh, peer-to-peer -peer employee recognition, uh, parental leave, return to work, well-being, support, um, exit might be through retire or moving on to another organisation, and then finally, actually being an alumni of the organisation as well. But throughout that experience, organisations have the opportunity to provide moments that delight or moments that disappoint. And don't we just know that? And in order to achieve that, and thinking about the, the coordination that is required between multiple functions within the organisation and also multiple systems within the organisation, HR, IT, facility, security, etc. Imagine again in that situation with Fraser, and unfortunately this might be some other people's experience, when you do turn up on day one, the pass isn't working, uh, the laptop is still being built by IT, and your line manager is in meetings all day. Not great, but if that were the case, Fraser's whole experience on that day one would be quite different. He would probably have huge regrets about joining the organisation. So in order to deliver a seamless and positive employee experience, it's critical that organisations are able to marry together these different functions and also these different systems. And that, as we know, is extremely complex. Um, the HR technology space is worth $8 billion. Um, I'm sure there are brands on there. There are multiple others. That is the tip of the iceberg. But there are mo multiple uh, software vendors, suppliers, providers uh, aiming to deliver excellent employee experience and joining up those employee experiences across multiple platforms. Um, human resource management providers offer single point access um, to multifunctional HR systems, flex benefits, administration rewards, time attendance, performance management, peer-to-peer -peer recognition, single sign-on into all these platforms so the experience is as seamless as possible. You can go and book your holiday and hopefully then you can just transition straight through to look at your current pension pop performance on the DC or the well, most likely the, the DC uh, pension platform. And the goal for organisations is to bring all of this together and invest in technology and technology do has a part to play in that. So we would think that with all of this advancement in technology, with the millions of pounds that organisations are spending on implementing technology, that the response would be that our employee experience is now seamless, it's really positive, and we are retaining and attracting talent into the organisation because everyone's talking about what a fantastic experience it is here. Um, however, the reality is quite different. Technology research company ISG, they interviewed 271 companies with a series of questions about their HR technology uh, and the environment that they provided for their employees. And um, within that, they said, well, why did you implement um, software as a service HR arm? What was the main goal for implementing this new HR technology platform in the organisation? And the first reason that was cited was to improve the employee user experience. That's why we did it. We wanted to improve the employee user experience. That same audience was asked the question, have you achieved measurable business value improvements from adopting that HRM platform? And as you can see, nearly two thirds had said, no, we did not achieve the benefits that we were looking for and the measurable improvements that we were looking for in our employee experience. And as we see their quote from Josh Burson, even after deploying a costly new HRM platform, companies are still not delivering the employee experience that they want. So why is that? Why, despite all this investment in technology, and technology does play a part, and technology, if it goes wrong, really does play a part, but despite investing in single sign-on and this wonderful technology environment for our people, 
Um, HR leaders are still saying we're lagging behind in terms of the overall employee experience. Well, we would say that that's because there are a number of factors that influence the overall experience that your employees have. And we'll all be familiar with those different elements of the journey and the different uh, impacts um, that the environment that we create have on our people. Uh, just a couple of those, strategic direction and purpose. Um, we've heard a lot about already purpose today, but if you were to audit your employees and say, how aligned do you feel with the sense of purpose that we have as an organisation? How clear are you of that? And how bought into that are you? That would be an interesting survey to do. Um, leaders and managers play a critical role in terms of the overall employee experience. If Jane in that uh, uh, interaction earlier had not even recognised Fraser, what impact would have that had on him and his sense of value in the organisation? Uh, performance management, career progression, uh, colleagues and social cohesion. And again, we heard about that this morning, but that sense of being together and, and feeling that we're in a team and we're, we're joined up and we're, we're all working towards the same goal. Uh, critical towards the overall employee experience. And of course, benefits and well-being plays a, a massive part of that as well. Does this organisation care for me? Does it care for my family or enable me to care for my family? Does it help me to save for the future? Uh, what kind of benefits offering are, are in terms of um, uh, leave and, and being able to take time off for volunteering, for example? You know, all of those great offerings that employers give to their employees all contribute towards the employee experience. And of course, technology is part of that. But we would say that there are two elements of um, an organisation that probably have the biggest impact on employee experience. And they are people and communication. You see, you can have all of that actually wrapped up really very nicely. And you can have a brilliant technology platform. But if these two areas fall over, if people and communication fail, somewhere along that journey, it can make or break not only the employee experience, but of course the reputation of the organisation. Now, we, we see this again, you know, this is the employee space, but if you take that, that whole principle into the, the customer space and the consumer space, and we'll all know, but no doubt be aware of, of that as we're coming up to Black Friday and, and Christmas and, and, you know, the, the number of people that are going to be ordering over various platforms over the next few days and, and indeed weeks. But, you know, organisations have spent millions uh, of pounds investing and dollars investing in creating a very uh, intelligent, uh, customer-focused customer experience. You can uh, go onto the website and you will see uh, personal recommendations, data-driven. The user experience is seamless. Um, minimal clicks to order. Um, the whole experience digitally is absolutely brilliant. I can do this across multiple devices. Um, as long as I've got a Wi-Fi connection, as one of the Maslow's hierarchy of needs now, isn't it? It's kind of battery Wi-Fi and then the rest of them. Um, but as long as I've got Wi-Fi connection, everything will be absolutely fine. And, and of course, that's great. But if people get involved, that's where things can go really, really wrong. So, <laughs> that, that, that's, that, that's a real-life example. So, you know, I've ordered my $500 digital camera, and uh, it's really fragile. And I, I even got a note saying it had been delivered. So communication was good, but that was the delivery. And, you know, that, you, you can see this video. I mean, it, it, it does happen. But the, the, the point I'm making is that tech was great, but people is where it all fell over. Um, so our, our view is that actually you need to as much invest in your people and the people part of the employee experience and, and also the communication. And communication is, is key. I, I just want to now um, kind of come into land uh, with uh, an example of where an organisation has really got this together very well. They won two awards um, this year, one for best use of technology in communication and another for the best and most innovative way of communicating um, to their people. Now, the, the challenge, this was IMI, it's an engineering company, a fine with us sharing this story, um, about 1,500 engineers um, across the UK. Um, challenge with them was how to improve the employee experience as, as far as it goes to engaging people with retirement savings. Now, of course, we know that that is a, 
a topic uh, close to many people's hearts, financial well-being. It, you know, it's just, it's just out there now and it's not going away. Uh, we, we know for a fact that um, you know, financial concerns are one of the biggest drivers of, of, of mental health challenges in the workplace. Um, but in terms of saving for the future, it, it's important, and people have actually cited in research by CIPD, that saving for the future contributes towards my financial well-being. So IMI's challenge was uh, no one was opening their pension statements. Nobody was engaging at all with their pension. They could not measure um, the level of engagement um, with, with the pension scheme. And frustratingly, you know, you send out documents and you just don't know if anybody ever reads it. And, you know, and it's fair to say that the pension is the most expensive benefit we offer our people. It's the most valuable benefit we offer our people. And it's probably the least understood benefit that we offer our people. Uh, hence the um, investment in uh, addressing that. Um, in terms of multi-channel, multi-device, uh, we always think multi-channel is always going to be digital. Actually, research shows that when you send somebody something through the post, and it's a package, and it's kind of interesting, they're far more likely to open that than an email with pensions in the topic. So um, work with the team at IMI to say, look, what's going to really work and engage them, um, uh, their people? Um, why don't we send through a, 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 a sachet of nice ground coffee with this message on it, a really important cuppa, for the cost of a coffee a day, you could as add as much as £75,000 to your savings pot. Notice the word could there. This is not advice. This is just <laughs> speculative. It's possible. But the point was is that just getting people thinking about, well, I never realised that. And, and oftentimes the reason people um, don't engage in this topic is because they simply don't understand it or don't know it. So this was all around using multi-channel in order to engage people. The next thing in that was a really nice um, and smart looking and very creative looking and engaging pension statement. It wasn't your normal boring, I'm going to go to sleep with this one. It was a really engaging statement. But the key to this was the QR code. In terms of QR codes, we think this is a massive potential uh, for communication uh, in, in the future, as it's being used usually now. With, there's, there's one out um, uh, there in, in, in the lobby area. Uh, the beauty of it is we were able to integrate data into that QR code. Don't know how the tech guys did it. It was completely secure. It was completely audited and absolutely fine. Um, but when Jane held her phone up against that QR code, up popped a modelling tool with Jane's data in it. And that took away all of those barriers that so often get in the way. The login barriers, the putting in your data, can't even remember uh, you know, how much I've currently got, I don't even know if I've got a pension, that's <laughs> the case for some people. So it was all there, made as easy as possible. Let's really focus on how we can make this experience as seamless as possible. And as a result of that, not only was there a bit of a kind of barometer on how well you're doing, but really simple ways in which you could improve that performance um, by something like uh, just giving up a bottle of wine a week. Now, that might be a shock to some people, and we're not suggesting... <laughs> I'm not going to do that, rather a smaller pension. We're not suggesting that you do that, but, but, uh, but it was just a way to, again, engage people in that experience and that journey and, and, and make it really relevant to them as individuals. Then uh, taking it through to, to web and blog, you know, the thing is that we all like to graze information now. That's how we, that's how we uh, kind of consume data, we graze. Um, you know, we don't generally read 24-page articles unless we have to. We'll, we'll graze a bit of information here and a bit of information there. So the point of building some kind of blog is it, it, it feeds into that, the way in which people like to be communicated to. Um, but in addition to that, how else can we make the experience fun? Well, well, how do you make pensions fun? How do you make learning about pensions fun? Well, let's think about a quiz that people will uh, engage with and know all about. Um, why don't we get a lookalike in, a Jeremy Clarkson lookalike, whose voice is eerily like Jeremy Clarkson. In fact, I'd say if you closed your eyes, you'd think it was Jeremy Clarkson. And why don't we do a bit of a quiz for people to watch and engage with on the portal? Here it is. On to our next question. In pensions, what does DC stand for? Is it A, diligent contribution? B, defined credit? C, defined contribution? Or D, dollar collecting? Again, you've got 30 seconds. Your time starts now. OK, so I remember this from the pensions roadshow so the correct answer is c to find contribution final answer i can tell you that's the right answer well done so that 
that's just an example of taking the experience from the digital right into the kind of film arena as well, making a bit of fun. Uh, j just a couple of uh, stats on that, that particular example. 40% of members uh, that use the model that actually use and interact with that model. Of those, 72% of them um, actively, who actively engaged with the modeler in increased their contribution by 3% or more. So in, in terms of the output that IMI were looking for, it, it absolutely enabled them uh, to go in and increase their, their contribution and have a, a positive outcome in years to come. I've never once heard anybody say, I wish I'd put less money into my pension and I wish I'd opted out of the scheme 25 years ago. Never heard it. Um, so that's just a, a, an example, bringing together print, uh, direct mail, uh, digital web, QR codes, um, a blog and film into one holistic experience, admittedly around one specific topic, uh, but that's what that delivered. So just to finish, because my time is up, innovations, virtual reality, AI, we've heard about that, personal animations, haven't got time for that now because time is up, but, but um, loads of great innovations coming through. Uh, they, they are working in organisations now, but we're going to see them, I think, going through even more um, in, in, in the future. And, and just to finish off, you know, yes, employee journey is critical. Um, every element of that journey we have opportunity to delight or to disappoint. Uh, but it's people and communication, in our view. Technology is brilliant and it's right. But again, echoing what Matthew Taylor was saying this morning, it's people and communication. It's the human experience that is critical as well to the overall employee experience. Thank you for listening. <laughs>